will not stand for that. And that's uh, precisely what they said this week. Uh, the Kremlin announced, uh, and here it's reported by RT in our next slide, that these threats against the Syrian government, like Spicer, you know, saying, we know they're going to do another chemical weapons attack, you know, and all this kind of thing. This, these are unacceptable. Of course, the, I think the Russians are a little uh, understated in calling out these false flags, Jeremy. I mean, sure, they can say it's unacceptable. We won't let it happen. That's probably getting most of the message across. But I wish the Russians would take a much more proactive line against false flags. Uh, RT used to be full of 9-11 truth stuff. I was there, part of the program, 9-11 uh, and Operation Gladio, which was Daniel Bushel's truth seeker program that nearly went viral into like 100 million plus views on the run up to 9-11 a few years ago. And then the NSA, apparently, or somebody with their capabilities, uh, removed it from all search engines, including the YouTube search engine. So it's uh, it's soaring towards 100 million views, uh, suddenly stopped and flatlined. Um, and so RT used to be doing that. And, and now it seems to me the Russian government, and especially RT, have really stepped back in pushing back against false flags. I wish they would be more forthright. Yes, yeah, similarly to the way that the truth movement calling out the threats of false flag is key, no matter the intention of whether Trump himself is trying to uh, prevent something by talking about it, the the uh, the uh, um, assertion of the truth is the key factor here, and of course. Russian government and RT, as, as the RT looks more and more in the West as if it's been compromised likely by Zionist forces from within. And uh, the, the Russian government becomes looking more and more like the dog that didn't bark in relationship to this larger war of terror. Um, and whether it's because they, uh, they're uh, you know, uh, Chechnya and their own so-called Muslim problem, or whether there's a larger geostrategic uh, consensus about escalation of, uh, of, of militarization, of security contracts. And uh, yeah, Russia, if it, if it, if it were serious in uh, standing down the, the, the U.S. and Israel, would be calling out these, uh, these uh, false flags very, very clearly in a very official uh, fashion rather than saying we're not going to let this happen, which is make, makes me suspicious whether they played uh, a, an agreeing role in the softening of the Syrian government in relationship to the Ghouta false flag and facilitating the uh, the shipping off of their deterrent. Now, I'm all against the chemical weapons, nuclear weapons, and of course this is what's missed also in this, is that no matter who does these uh, attacks, and 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 who, th there are human beings on the ground who suffer the consequences. And the larger crime here in Syria is the uh, destabilization effort, which is very very clearly uh, described in the clean uh, break uh, documents, and it appears to be being followed. So we need real uh, patriots, patriots of international scope, not patriots who are willing to go along to get along in order to uh, you know create their own. Uh, you know, uh, London-backed uh, situation in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the, the riches of paper currency and security contracts. Well, you know, part of the problem, Jeremy, with, with the Russians being so soft-spoken in the way they call this stuff out is it was, uh, you know, when you have two sides that are putting out, you know, messages, conflicting messages, fighting with each other, and one side is providing a very strong message, uh, even if it's completely false, if it's a lie, and the other side is putting out a kind of a, uh, a moderate message. The problem is that the audience, which isn't really paying attention, often is going to sort of split the difference and say, well, the truth must be halfway in between. This problem was pointed out in this great book, Political Ponerology, by the uh, Polish physician uh, Lobosuski. He wrote about his experiences in uh, communist Poland. And he says that psychopaths uh, get into power and create a pathocracy or a psychopathic kind of uh, contagion in power. And, and that he points out that psychopaths who lie like they breathe can put out these very strong messages that are total lies. And so if you're testifying against a psychopath in court, the psychopath will just make up this extreme lie that supports his position in court. And then when you provide a, a kind of a moderate, rational uh, portrait of your own position, the judge and jury will usually split the difference. And so they end up 
the decision ends up massively favoring the liar and the psychopath. And that's what's happening here. The whole media, the public is imagining that this chemical weapons BS, these false flags, actually there might be some truth to them. And so that's why Russia needs to take a stronger position. They need to scream false flag just as loud as Sean Spicer and Trump and the mainstream media are screaming evil chemical weapons by the evil dictator Assad. Uh, so that's my advice to the Russian PR people, and I doubt if they're going to take it, but stop being so reasonable. Stop being so moderate. Put your position out there in a strong and clear way. Yeah, the, the connections between uh, Russia increasingly with Israel in relationship to these security uh, contracts, the uh, importation of uh, millions of, uh, of right-wing Russians into Israel after the, the uh, fall of the Soviet Union appears to be part and parcel of some type of exchange agreement between uh, Tel Aviv and Moscow. And uh, whether this is playing in to uh, the sort of the soft rolling uh, of, uh, of Russia against the, the, the worst aggressions of the, of the U.S. and Israel in this region uh, is a question that needs to be answered. And this relates to the story that you submitted, our next story, which was the Gordon Duff interview, a terrific interview. Hmm, kind of a small slide here, but uh, sorry, <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, it just came out that way. Anyway, Gordon uh, uh, points out that we're we're seeing a deceptive, uh, you know, pullout of of Daesh from Mosul and so on. Uh, that actually, you know, the the usual suspects are are still running Daesh, and that he said that the the U.S. sailors coming aground in Israel is that's going to set up a false flag that maybe you know the evil anti-Israel terrorists, quote unquote, are going to be attacking the U.S. sailors in Israel. He says that they never used to let sailors go ashore in situations like this precisely to avoid the possibility of this kind of false flag. Yes, and the, the reason that I included this is because it to me it seems like a very credible warning about how this all could go down while there's a lot of emphasis on Syria and, uh, and this now debunked uh, chemical weapons attack. Uh, it remains that that Hezbollah in southern Lebanon remains the main target in many ways in terms of the most immediately geographical target of uh, of the the right wing uh, Israeli government uh, in terms of their uh, clean break program and so in thinking through this uh, connection from from Iran. Uh, very geographically through Syria into into Lebanon and the relationship with Hezbollah, uh, a, a, a really powerful way to set things off would be to have some type of attack on U.S. sailors in Israel that's blamed on Iranian-backed Hezbollah operatives, which would then uh, initiate uh, uh, an Israeli assault on southern Lebanon and a, a maybe a further uh, assault on Syria. And this reminds us of what happened or what didn't quite happen back in 2007. As our next slide shows, uh, there was a parallel situation in Bahrain. In that case, uh, Gwyneth Todd, who a former member of the National Security Council, who was a top advisor to the a series of admirals uh, in Bahrain, where the U.S. Fifth Fleet is headquartered, or became aware of a plan for a big false flag to attack American sailors. Uh, and kill American sailors and then blame it on Iran-sponsored forces. In this case, it would have been Bahraini Shia forces. And Gwyneth knew this was ludicrous, that you know, the whole the whole setup was ridiculous. Uh, and to her credit, she had the courage to blow the whistle on it and stop it from happening. She went through her State Department contacts and they were able to prevent this false flag from happening. However, she then ended up with a, a, an order, a, a price on her head, an execution order. She had to flee Bahrain and she's been living in the boondocks of Australia and being threatened by American uh, dark operators ever since. So same thing's happening now in Israel. It looks like a setup of Hezbollah attacking U.S. sailors, just as back in 2007 we nearly had supposedly Iranian-sponsored Bahraini Shia forces attacking American sailors. In both cases, the purpose was exactly the same. Start a big U.S. war with Iran or, or some kind of war with Iran and with Iranian-sponsored forces on behalf of Israel.
Yes, this, this speaks to the importance of patriotic insiders involved in national security, whether they're in the military intelligence or civilian command structure, who take their oath to protect the Constitution based on our God-given rights, rather than the, uh, the geopolitical cause of the worst elements of the, of the United States, and now increasingly more a hostile foreign government out of Tel Aviv uh, that is utilizing our military to take down their, what's really their political enemies. Uh, and Richard Clark uh, being fingered by Gwyneth Todd is really uh, interesting, and uh, the 9-11 Truth Movement should look at that uh, with a lot of interest. Um, and also, Seymour Hirsch was part of doing the coverage about the escalation of threats of, uh, of uh, provo pro uh, provocative uh, actions in relationship to Iran in that era of 2006-2007. He said that there were plans on the table that were ultimately rejected to do false flags and blame them on uh, Iran, I believe, and even Iraq uh, at the time. And uh, so this needs to be exposed from the inside out and it needs to be bound. And then ultimately we're going to need to wrap and roll this entire post 9-11 shakedown era up, whether it's the security contractors, the uh, Israel Israeli political motivations, the domestic uh, fascist uh, security forces. Um, this needs to be rolled up based on Article 3, Section 3 of the Constitution. So we don't have to continue continually put out fire after fire here. Here, here. Uh, and maybe we'll talk about how that could be done. There's a Cynthia McKinney and Robert David Steele initiative that we'll get to later that I think is, is one of the many uh, promising efforts here on rolling that stuff up. 